Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Easton. Welcome to the show. And this week we are exploring some of the most creative and innovative ideas to have been generated in the Middle East and North Africa region as we pick the brains of some UAE-based inventors. A little bit later on, we'll meet some bright young things who are busy designing devices that they hope will one day change the world. But first, can you imagine looking out to sea from the UAE's coastline and spotting a gargantuan iceberg from Antarctica floating there? Well, if one Emirati gentleman has his way, he might soon get the chance. Many skeptics have given the cold shoulder to Abdullah al Shehi's dream of bringing an iceberg to the desert. For six years, the ambition of the engineer, inventor and entrepreneur has been to tow an iceberg from Antarctica for around 10 months to its final position three kilometers off the UAE's Fajera coast. The iceberg, which will be selected by satellite and could measure two kilometers by 500 meters, will then be harvested for its glacial water, which will be bottled and sold, Al Shehi assures, for around the same price as locally processed water. He argues that the project provides solutions to the country's water shortage, given that around 15% of the world's desalinated water is consumed in the arid UAE. And the project, if successful, could have wider-reaching implications, with the United Nations forecasting that there could be a 40% shortfall of fresh water worldwide by 2030. To test the project's viability later this year, a smaller iceberg will be moved by tugboat to South Africa or Australia for water harvesting. If all goes to plan, phase two will see the UAE's iceberg glide into view in the coming years. Whilst a patent-pending metal belt will be used to prevent the iceberg from breaking up in transit, it is still expected to lose up to 30% of its mass before it reaches warm Arabian waters. Al Shehi believes the project could supply around 1 million people with fresh drinking water for up to five years, with additional revenue streams potentially coming from tourists going on iceberg outings, giving birth to the very new concept of glacial tourism in the Gulf. Abdullah, a very warm welcome to Inspire Middle East. My pleasure and uh, many thanks for the invitation again. Let me start by asking you, we know that icebergs are a great source of water, but the idea has been floated for many years, since the 1800s, uh, for example, with limited success. So what convinces you that it's going to work this time? Well, so many attempts were uh, done earlier in order to harvest fresh water from icebergs. Back in 1975, uh, a French scientist have uh, suggested the idea to uh, the Saudi Prince Mohammed Al Faisal in order to start uh, the harvesting icebergs for the Saudi consumption, water consumption. But unfortunately, on 1977, due to technical reasons, they stopped uh, the project. This is where I, uh, we started from. Rumors are swirling about the price of this project, some of them ranging from $50 million to 150. For phase one and phase two, what are we talking about? Our plan is to conduct a trial run either to Perth in Australia or to Cape Town in South Africa. And the expected uh, cost for the trial run would range from 60 to $80 million. And for the full-fledged operation to the United Arab Emirates and the cost of Fujairah, we expect that it will cost around 100 million to 150 million dollars. And how would that affect the ecosystem of the UAE? It's ex expected that the presence of these icebergs may cause uh, a weather pattern change. Because uh, they are cold bodies, they will attract the clouds, which are uh, moving on the Arabian Sea. And once uh, to its center, once it's brought into the center, we expect that it will bring more rain to the region, inshallah. Which is no bad thing, but how do you respond to ecologists and critics who say that environmentally this is not the smartest move? From an environmental point of view, uh, an environmental assessment impact was done and shows a minimal uh, impact to the ecosystem as well as the environment. So it has been proven. In addition, uh, in comparison to desalination, it's more uh, environmental friendly rather than desalination. The costs and energy involved with desalinating water are sizable. So how can you be sure that your way is different and more cost effective? As per our analysis, it will be cheaper to bring in these icebergs and utilize them for fresh water rather than 
uh, rather than utilizing the desalination water because desalination plants require huge capital investment. In addition, they are pumping a huge amount of brine water to the Gulf, making the salinity of the sea water very huge, killing, uh, killing even the, how to say, the fish and marine uh, on the Arabian Sea. So uh, we believe it would be more economical and uh, environmental friendly project to utilize the icebergs water, not only for the United Arab Emirates, but uh, throughout the world. It's estimated that you'll lose around 30% of the iceberg's mass in transit, and then it will sit in the Arabian Gulf, where in the summer the temperatures hit around 40 degrees. It's melting at a rapid pace. So how quickly do you need to process that water? We will start the harvesting process immediately, and we expect it will take us two to three months. The melting rate is taken into consideration, as well as other aspects where we will be limiting the amount of fresh water lost during transit. So uh, the iceberg is expected to reach during winter season here in the United Arab Emirates. In addition, there are other facts, uh, such as the depth of these icebergs are as deep as 300 meters in the, uh, how to say, in the sea. The deeper you go, the cooler the water is, which will as well limit the melting rate. Are you used to people saying this idea is simply crazy, raising their eyebrows, saying it will never work? Of course, we saw the entire world was shocked. How come the Arabian Sea will bring an iceberg? On the... <laughs> so it was a bit of a shock to the entire world. But of course, it is a bit of a challenge, which we believe with the current technology, we can overcome it, inshallah. It's a fascinating project. It was great to hear more about it. Thank you for talking to me today. Many thanks. A pleasure, inshallah. Hopefully we will see the iceberg soon in the Arabian Sea. Over the centuries, the MENA region has been the birthplace of many ideas which have become must-have modern-day inventions, devices and objects. Salim Esaid examines some of the best known and meets some little people with big ideas who might just be the game-changing inventors of tomorrow. Since the beginning of time, inventions have moved human civilization forward, with many of these creations coming from the Middle East and North Africa, like the idea of cryptography, the art of writing and deciphering hidden messages practiced by pharaohs in ancient Egypt. In the 8th century, Omani grammarian Al-Khalil Al-Farahidi wrote the first book on cryptography, which gave way to methods we use today to encode data for cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology, and more. In the 9th century, the first man to fly in a bird-like costume, for a few moments at least, was Abbas ibn Firnas, who was of Berber origin and born in Andalusia, Spain. It was a feat achieved hundreds of years before the Italian artist and inventor Leonardo da Vinci's flying contraptions, and later, the American Wright brothers' airplane. And powering machines early on was engineer and author of the Book of Knowledge of Ingenious Mechanical Devices, Ismail al-Jazari of Turkey, who is also nicknamed one of the founding fathers of robotics. He invented the crankshaft in the 13th century, which put modern designs like the combustion engine of cars and other mechanisms in motion. Accelerating forward, the innovation hasn't stopped. World Expo starting in 1851 introduced life-enhancing discoveries, including the diesel engine from the Paris Expo in 1900 and wireless trams from South Korea's Expo 2012. The upcoming Dubai Expo 2020 is expected to showcase even more creative, dynamic designs which could benefit society. The UAE is investing in its future inventors with events like the Sharjah Children's Biennial, where more than 3,000 children from 42 nationalities submitted ideas with the goal of creating a working prototype. With inventions like a shoe that can fully charge your phone in 500 steps, to a planetary vacuum cleaner that can take away the world's pollution, a child's imagination is truly a wondrous thing. Many of the inventions are far from realistic, but that's okay. The main idea is to encourage youngsters to think outside the box. Like 16-year-old winner Tame and her new sport, Tornado Skate, where competitors race wearing solar-powered skis to glide across sand and hover in the air. 
She says that having her work recognized has encouraged her to create more. Of course, this is not the end. This is just the beginning. Uh, I've had a lot of like I, I used to I used to scribble a lot of, a lot of like invention and stuff, and this gave me the chance to like show one of my favorite inventions. It's said that necessity is the mother of invention, and seven-year-old Efran from Dubai thanks his energetic four-year-old younger sister Ishal for being his inspiration. I sit there every time he gets lost. So he created the Panic Track Watch, which uses GPS technology to locate her wherever she wanders. It also has added security features for the wearer. When you press the button, it tracks me. It connects to the parent's mobile, and they can see where is the child is and immediately can find them. Other inventions on display in Sharjah included a Brussels sprout launcher to deter siblings from entering bedrooms uninvited, which may not hit the mainstream market anytime soon. But who knows, it could plant the seed of an idea for a world-changing discovery. Well, that's all that we have time for in this edition of the show. We hope that you enjoyed it. And don't forget, you can catch all of our programs online at urinews.com. Before I say goodbye, here are some clever, inspiring social media posts that caught our attention this week. Alison from India took her daughter Kristen to the Sharjah Children's Biennale, saying they both loved the creativity. And Tariq from the UAE designed this radio-controlled helicopter for a competition in Kuwait.